when you quit your job and we were you know had a mountain of debt and we were like let's do this let's go on this road trip and figure out how to like make it work mm -hmm. and it was just like I mean I'm getting emotional thinking about it mm. it's like in such a short amount of time we've come so far I'm gonna give it all I got all I got Welcome to Embrace the Grind, the show where we talk about whatever we want to talk about, but usually we just talk about business, we talk about poker, talk about entrepreneurship, and I usually have a guest on. Andrew is my co-host, but he's taking the week off, and Olga is going to be my co-host slash interview. You guys have been asking for her in the comments for a long time, for three years, ever since I've been making the channel. So I figured we would do an informal sit-down have a drink or two and discuss everything yeah. that we want to discuss. I think it's going to be a good show and I, I'm excited for the audience to get to know Olga. So why don't you introduce yourself, Olga? What's up, guys? My name is Olga and I'm married to Johnny, as most of you know. I am... Uh, You're a PR girl. Yeah, I am a PR girl. I know, I'm trying to figure out what like how do I describe myself there's so many I'm so many things but um, for the sake of the show I am uh, an entrepreneur I own my own PR and influencer marketing company that I just started in October of 2019 I've been grinding since then 2020 was a really fun year it was a year of just getting off the ground learning how to run a business figuring out QuickBooks and just so many different things in the entre entrepreneurship world. Well, cheers to that. Cheers to being an entrepreneur. Thank you. It's like a, it's definitely a new thing for you and it's something that you weren't really born to do. And I think that, uh, you know, you, you did the, the college thing, you went to college and well, I mean, if we can, we can back up really far. You're born in Russia. So I, I think a lot of people could probably figure that out based on the way you look. Your name is Olga. And uh, you came to America when you were around 10 years old. Mm -hmm. 1998. Which is pretty impressive that you don't have an accent, I must, I must say. Like, you <laughs> have 0% Russian accent. And then when you talk to your mom, it's like very like Russian, thick <laughs> accent. Do you want some borscht? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure my mom is going to love that. Shout out to Victoria. Shout out to mom. She makes some really good borscht which I cannot make, unfortunately. Yeah, she didn't yeah. teach you, she yeah. didn't teach you the, uh, the cooking stuff. She did not teach me the Russian way. She was the typical Russian mom where she just wanted to do all the things in the kitchen. She just kind of kept me out and she also worked and hustled, which really is like a, a big part of who I am because my mom had three jobs when I was growing up. She was always, she was a hustler. Yeah, she but, was a lawyer. She was a uh, she taught law at a local college, and then I think she did like a bunch of other things. But being but being a hustler in Russia is different than being a hustler in the United States. Like since she grew up in a communist country, it was basically hustling through the system. Yeah, um, not really an entrepreneur type hustler. It was like you know all these jobs, like you said, lawyer, um, taught law school. Mm -hmm. um, and then even here now that she's in America, obviously her law degree didn't transfer, mm -mm. but she's, she's working. She's on the grind. She's like always um, basically been a hard worker. And I think that that's you as well. But what I think is interesting is that <clears throat> you were supposed to basically follow in those steps. Like that's kind of the route that you um, were destined to take. You know, you went to school. That's what your mom taught you. You know, let's let's go to college, let's get the safe job. And you did that right out of mm -hmm. college. You got the, you know, you did the internships and all those things. And uh, you were a very hard worker. One of the things that really attracted to me, to you early on was your work ethic. And not only that, like your work ethic rubs off on me. It makes me work harder. Like there's not a shadow of a doubt in my mind that Johnny Vibes is a bigger brand and Johnny Vibes is a better poker player because of the work ethic that you kind of just rubbed off on me. But like entrepreneurship, that, that wasn't in the cards. Not no, at all. I not mean, at all. And, and it was just, how do you feel like that happened? Well, first of all, thank you for saying those 
things about me being a hard worker and for me inspiring you. Um, it means a lot. Um, and yeah, you know, I was meant to go the traditional route, get a job, have health insurance, get a 401k, and be safe and set for a successful life. That was a really big thing that my mom always instilled in me when I was going to school and growing up. She always said, get good grades so you could go to college, a good college, and then get good grades in college and study hard so then you can get a job. And from her perspective, that was really the kind of the pinnacle of the professional world and but that's all she knew because in russia especially back in the 90s entrepreneurship wasn't really a thing i think it is a little bit more now because you kind of hear about russian billionaires and and a lot more of the entrepreneurship uh route being taken by russians but back in her day it really just wasn't the case so she always encouraged me to go to go the route that she knew which was amazing because when I took that route, I was really successful. And I think it really taught me a lot about structure, responsibility, um, and really just kind of learning the ropes of the business world. Yeah. And I think I really needed that to, to, to get to where I am now. For sure. And you, you definitely were uh, in roles that were um, supporting you know, the, the entrepreneur. Um, you started out basically at big firms mm -hmm. and then eventually I remember you had an opportunity to work with your former boss mentor Anna also Russian very similar to you in a lot of ways and I remember it was like kind of like a struggle in your mind like do I do this mm -hmm. thing where it's just me and Anna and like no 401k and like no health insurance like we have to figure out health insurance I, I, Anna eventually figured that mm -hmm. out but the point was, is it was just like you two starting this thing. I remember they, she could only, she couldn't even pay you what you were <laughs> making at the previous job, but you had to sit back and think, okay, do I want to take a chance with Anna and do this thing where I might make less, but learn a lot more and uh, set myself up for something bigger in the future. And that's what you eventually did. And I, I would say that it worked out. Like, let's not make no mistake about it. You're like, you're not the seasoned entrepreneur. Like this is kind of like a new thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you quit, you quit your job in 2019, at the end of 2019, back when like our finances weren't the best, but you kind of just knew it was time at that mm -hmm. moment. Yeah, so just to go back to me working with Anna, who is just someone that I'm, I've always viewed as a mentor, someone that's inspired me in, in so many ways, personally and professionally. And when she, when she asked me if I would be willing to come work with her when it was just her at the company and another assistant, it really was a, a difficult decision. And it really wasn't a difficult decision because of the pay, because I actually remember it was pretty comparable to what I was making at my job at Ace Fitness, which is a health and fitness nonprofit. But I think the fear really came from taking that leap and working for a one person company, because that's something I was not used to. Mm -hmm. I've never done that before. Like you said, I always worked for big firms, big companies that were already established. So there really was no risk. In a lot of ways. Um, actually, I want to backtrack to my first job, which was at Lane PR in Portland. And I got that job after having an internship at Edelman, which is a really big global firm for about eight months. And I was moving on to a full time job. And I, and I looked around and literally right up until my last day at my internship, I had no leads. And my last day I got an interview at Lane. And what I loved about Lane is it was started by a woman named Wendy Lane. And she was also an entrepreneur. She started this business on her own. And I think deep down, I was always really drawn to women that created something on their own. And I got to work really closely with her from a really young period of in my career. I was 
it was my first job. I was, you know, just learning the ropes of PR and she kind of took me under her wing. And I think that was really crucial for my trajectory. I learned a lot and she set me up for success by mentoring me and by showing me that I'm capable of a lot. And she really held me high and held me accountable and really supported me in those early days. And it made me want to work even harder for her because she held me so high. Mm. But I think just from the beginning, I had that experience and I haven't really thought a lot about it, but now that I'm reflecting on it, she was the first entrepreneur that I really worked closely with. Yeah, that's that's interesting because I didn't really put this together either, but essentially you having access to like the heads of companies, you know, Wendy Lane, Anna Crow, um, even uh, when you were at uh, Formula, you were you were kind of close to the owner of the company. Yep, Michael. I think that those kind of things, when you were like close to them, you're like, oh, this is what they do to mm-hmm. like build their business, and oh, this is what how hard they work to get clients and things like that. So, I like to think that like <coughs> I rubbed off on you, and like my hustle rubbed off on you. But to be honest, like these these people probably rubbed off on you huge because it's the exact same industry that you ended up going out on your own and uh, creating your own thing. But <clears throat> before we move on, I just want to say that this is fun for me because it I, fun. <laughs> I always want to like, one of the goals that I have with Embrace the Grind and just interviews in general is I want them to be fun and conversational, lighthearted and not presenty, mm-hmm. and us just like kind of feeling like our friendship and our relationship, you know, comes through to the camera. But oftentimes what happens is, is I'll interview someone and I want to be so professional. I'm like buttoned up. I'm like going to ask the right questions, want to be on point. But, you know, I'm having a beer right now, which, by the way, this mug right here, it says Johnny Vibes Mug, Mug Squad Cap- Captain, established March 26, 2020, which um, is almost exactly one year ago. Yeah, two days, uh, two days away. Yeah, um, by the time this comes out, it'll probably be like right on the dot, if not close to it. Uh, This is special to me because Mm -hmm. back when quarantine happened uh, exactly one year ago, uh, I was playing online poker because I was like, I have to play online poker. I can't play live poker anymore. And I came up with the idea to do these online meetups where we would have Zoom calls while we played poker. And they were a hit, you know, every Mm -hmm. single week without fail on a Thursday or a Friday. I mean, the first couple of weeks we were playing like- It was like almost every day. Yeah, we were getting drunk and playing yeah. five days a week. It so was so fun. It was crazy. Um, but it ended up settling into like a nice weekly home game. And the guys gave me this. They like pitched in. We all went to Vegas together. Everybody was like, let's do a real life meetup in person. And the guys gave this to me. It was my birthday in Vegas, my 40th birthday. And they gave this to me and it means a lot. So. Having this drink on the couch with you, I was like, I gotta, I gotta have a beer and I gotta pour it in my, in my beer stein. So like I, I said again, cheers. That's cheers to that. And I love that because I got to be part of the celebration in Vegas and I got to meet the guys for the first time in person. And they were all so great. They were so cute. I just obviously have met them on Zoom when I pop in. Sometimes I come home from girls night on Fridays and they see me a little buzzed off of wine, off of, you know, a little margarita. <laughs> so it was really fun to meet them. And I think the thing that really stands out for me from like, just when I look at that mug, it symbolizes, um, it symbolizes this like kind of like a rock almost. It's like, it's steel, right? It's hard. It, it symbolizes this kind of like an anchor for this past year. And I remember Uh, one of the guys shared that if it wasn't for the meetups, they would have just had a much more challenging time in 2020. And it was almost like, I can't remember who said this, but they said it was almost like meditation. It was, it was, is, it was a way for them to relax into what was going on and to just kind of surrender and enjoy and have fun. And I, I thought that was so cool. And at the time, you know, we were just like, having fun. We were having drinks every night. You were playing. I was Zooming with my girlfriends yeah, for no, hours every night. It's crazy. Like these guys, shout out to the meetup squad. Like these guys became my friends, you know, yeah, like 
I think that's so cool. One guy, um, Sam, he, uh, we call him DJ and Sam. He, yeah, Sam, I met him. Sam Sinai. He, he's been in our house. Yeah, he came know? to our house about like, a Three guy, weeks ago. a guy that I met on, you know, well, I met him through uh, physical meetups too, um, like a commerce. So I met him one time. Um, Edgar, you know, Edgar, oh, before I move on to Edgar, Sam, uh, we're buying a real, uh, um, uh, Airbnb rental with Sam, you know? Yeah, that's so fun. Like, I, how cool is it that you met someone, built a relationship on, through playing online poker in 2020, the craziest year? in our lifetime and built these beautiful relationships and connections with these guys. And a year later, you guys are still going so strong every Friday. Yeah, essentially me and Sam are business partners now. So, I mean, through my yeah. content, I met Sam, became business partners. Edgar, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna end up staking Edgar and coaching him and mentoring him. And oh, I love Edgar <coughs> from perhaps, Montana. Yeah, and perhaps bringing him to Vegas. Maybe he'll, he'll invite us to his Montana home. I've been dying to go to Montana. He plays in the meetup every week. But the point is, is that it's crazy that just by doing these meetups in person at casinos and then through Zoom, because that's what we had to do, it created like all of these avenues for yep. new relationships, business partners, a, men a mentee situation. Um, yeah, I think it's like, I think it's really cool. I mean, uh, what a, what a year. Yeah. Cheers, cheers to the year. I, and <laughs> I, just to say that, like, you know, that my thing is relationships and it's been really fun to watch you create those new friendships and to hear from the guys in Las Vegas, how much you've impacted their year. Obviously 2020 was really hard for a lot of people. And it's really cool to see that you created something that made last year a little bit easier for people a little bit more fun a little bit more exciting a little bit maybe a couple more hungover days during the week than yeah. normal but it's like you know i'm really proud of that because i think relationships are so important in life um it's i think it's really the juice of life is sure. the people that we have in our life and how we spend time with them yeah, that's definitely your superpower. I mean, that's what makes you good at PR. That's what makes you good at, you know, building relationships with influencers and all the things that you do through your business. It's because they just love talking to you. So I that's rubbed off on me a little bit. Uh, I'm definitely not naturally the most social person, but just being the way that you are has um, had an effect on me. And like I said, when we first started, it's just, you, uh, your like influence on me has made for like a bigger Johnny Vibes brand and has, has made for, I guarantee there's no possible way that I would have done weekly meetups without you encouraging me. Like you were on Zoom every night with your friends. Oh yeah, I Zoomed with my girlfriends for like a good three hours a night, every night for the first two months? Yeah. Three I mean, months? It was just like energy for you. and I. I remember thinking like, they look like they're having fun. Like maybe I could try that. And it ended up being a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Like Zoom obviously has been around, FaceTime has been around until 2020, but I don't think people really Zoomed as much as they Zoomed in 2020. Like I'd be curious how many hours people spent on Zoom collectively well, the crazy thing around is, is the world. The crazy thing about Zoom is that once the pandemic started, the stock price of Zoom exploded. It went through the roof. Another crazy thing about this is there's a, there's a ticker, stock ticker that says Zoom, that's some random Chinese company. And that, it's not Zoom? That has nothing to do with Zoom video conferencing that ex also exploded because people were accidentally buying their stock. My God. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, another thing that I kind of wanted to talk about was our quarantine together was pretty good. Like we, you know, spending a lot of time with someone, a significant other or a sibling or whatever, coworkers, if you're with someone all the time, that can unearth problems that you didn't really know were there until you're with that person a lot of time. And we kind of had a head start on, on uh, quarantine and just COVID lockdowns in general. When you quit your job back in 2019, it was like October of 2019. Mm -hmm. And 
Because up until that point, like, you were gone at work all day. Yep. I went into the office at 7, 7.30 in the morning. You go until 8. Well, I think I would come home well, you go around 6, and then I would always do hot yoga. That was kind of my routine. And then I would get home at 8. By the time I showered, it was like 8.30, 9 o'clock. Essentially, our communication with each other as a couple was at 8 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm until we went to bed at like 11. So we had three hours and we would yep. talk. We would, I mean, we did pretty good, but I like would miss you all the time. And mm-hmm. I would go play poker. And if I played poker at night, then I just wouldn't see mm-hmm. you. I, I would play late and then I would come home, you'd be sleeping. So there would be weeks on end where we didn't get to see each other. And I think that the old saying like, absence makes the heart grow fonder. That was kind of like, for us, I felt like we got to see each other on weekends mm-hmm. and it was fun. And then when you quit your job in uh, September, October, I can't remember the exact month of 2019. It was end of September 2019. We sold everything, got rid of our apartment, packed up our car, uh, and just hit the road. And we were together every second of the day. (laughs) Yes, we were in a car. And there were problems. With Calvin sitting on our laps. And there were some problems. There were some problems, yeah. Yeah, and, well, and, and the old, entering into it too, like there was some financial like struggles yeah. too because like, it's not that I was, I was doing really well in poker, but the lifestyle that we had created through me playing poker and through your job was pretty expensive. You know, we were traveling everywhere. We were paying expensive rent in California. Mm-hmm. We were gone mm-hmm. almost every weekend because we're such social people and I think also a lot of our friends are really social, so there's always something like a birthday or a wedding, a bachelor party, bachelorette party, week, qu- quick we, weekend getaway. We never said no. We never said no to anything. It, it was like yes to everything. It was like the it was like the four years of yes. And I and I remember thinking like, oh, it's fine. Like, we probably don't have the money to do this, but I have like a hundred k in credit cards that have I have no debt and hundred k mm-hmm. in credit cards, and we can just spend on credit cards and I'll like and we'll catch up and we'll catch up yeah. like the nature of poker is that there's going to be a month where maybe I rip off 40k and then all of a sudden I erase half of our debt yeah but the problem is is that the bigger games that I was used to playing in the the 10 the 2550s or the 1020s and higher they just weren't running so I would like go play five five uh, seven mile here in San Diego and and win eight hundred dollars but it wasn't chipping away at the debt. And basically we were like, look, you're quitting your job and we're not making as much money as we need to make. We can't live in San Diego. Like we have to figure this thing out. And we sold everything, we packed up the car. And I remember when we did that, I mean, why don't you talk about like us leaving San Diego? That was hard for you. Yeah, well, I think just in general, it was a, It was a hard transition period because I had been at my job for four years. I loved it. I had spent a lot of time working on the business with Anna and, you know, I I lived, I lived and breathed that life. It was a Monday through Friday. I loved just like running into the office. A lot happened over four years. Like, learned a lot we grew the business we moved from office to office to office the teams grew clients came and went we traveled all over the country traveled to toronto traveled to so many different places so it was just that was my life and also i was so ingrained in the san diego like the downtown san diego bubble all of our friends lived downtown everything we did was downtown san diego i went to yoga every night a core power, like my life, I, I felt like my life was really wrapped up in living in San Diego. Well, our life. I know you were like at the tail end of it. You were traveling quite a bit. You were always meetups, meetups, big, bigger games, um, bigger games in LA. You did a lot of live at the bike. Um, you did a lot of. Um, you went to LA quite a bit. I mean, the, that's, that's the only, the tail end. That's you were the only place that, that I could play where really big games and it's hard because like you would go and you would, you, you're such an amazing player, but you would go and you would just get like pretty unlucky sometimes. And you were in games where you could, 
win or lose five to ten thousand dollars yeah it was crazy because i would be playing in san diego <laughs> and the only game that i would have available and it would take me 40 hours 50 hours sometimes a hundred hours to win five thousand dollars yeah and then i would go to la because i'm like i need to make right. money. right you were like i can play with these guys and then i would lose five thousand dollars in one hand so it just like it wasn't a sustainable lifestyle if i could just play in big games every single day that would be different but it just it wasn't that yeah. unfortunately um and so then we yeah we packed up the car and we're like we're gonna do this and we went to uh hey calvin come here hey oh, you want to be in the pup's video coming you want to be in the video oh he's not I allowed know. on the couch should we let him on the couch for the video uh sure come okay, on okay just for the video come here come oh. here buddy good boy oh this is a brand new couch yeah go ahead and lay down lay down buddy sit good boy <laughs> calvin say hi uh, so lay down good boy can lay. i get a shake can i get a shake this is our son right now. Can I get now. a shake? This is our uh, son. It's our, it's our son. His name is Calvin. He is a German shepherd. Can you imagine this guy sitting, sitting on our lap uh, when we were... Oh, for hours and hours and hours driving through all of the United States. Uh, d lay down, buddy. Lay down. And then the entire... Uh, the entire... The entire... Uh, ride. The entire back seat was full. Oh yeah, we ha didn't he? I, I I think towards like the middle end of the road trip, there was no space for him because we got groceries. Oh. Yeah, we collected like yeah, maybe we collected no things along the road the trip. People gave us gifts, uh, and his, we bought a dog bed for him. We left his dog bed in we a hotel. We left his dog bed room. in a hotel. Yeah, it was it was a lot. Um, let's go back to where we left off, which was leaving San Diego and. Yeah. So, Which, by the way, I want to mention that I miss Anna and Wayne. I know. They were absolutely an amazing couple. Yeah. I love them a lot. If you guys are watching, we miss you guys. And just like what we were talking about, obviously, Anna played such an instrumental role mm -hmm. in our lives. She helped pay our bills. She was you know, paying your salary for a long time. So we definitely want to say we appreciate you, Anna. Yeah, the, it, honestly... Meeting Anna was the best thing that's ever happened to me and it professionally. Except, except for me, right? Professionally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to preface that. Meeting her was the best thing because not only did I meet someone who was a friend, someone that came from the same culture of background, we have the exact same story. We both moved from Russia at the exact same age, except for she moved to Brooklyn, which is a little cooler, a little cooler than moving to Bend, Oregon. I yeah, mean, Bend's cool now, but Brooklyn. Yeah, but you got to go to University of Oregon. Yes, and like those, those I did. And like, I would not trade that experience for anything because I loved going to school in Oregon. We're jumping around so much here. We're talking about college. We're talking about uh, us leaving and going on the road trip. But mm -hmm. the road trip was the first time that we um, were spending a ton of time together. Yeah. So we had a little bit of a warm up for when lockdown happened. You know, we. I mean, we did so many things during the road trip and it was, it was really big for us because you started getting clients and before long, you were making decent money through the clients that you had booked and the meetups that I was doing, I was running amazing. Like I, I remember we went to uh, somewhere in the middle, Midland. We went to Midland, Texas. And Midland, Texas, I'll never forget. We, we slept in a guest bedroom um, of the nicest family in the entire world. They were so They're John. So welcoming. John Dunn. Shout out to John Dunn. Yeah. Um, they and the hi the what? What's the name of the the Co room? Kojaks? Kojaks. Kojaks That's poker right. room. I mean, they 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 allowed us to they, come in their home. Yeah, they welcomed us into their home with they, Calvin. Yep. They had their girls wanted to play games with me all night. Calvin was there. I yeah. met his wife, who was so lovely. It was just like they welcomed us in and they let us be part of their life for a night. And uh, I mean, how this, cool is, is, this that? is just so crazy. Like, we're in a, basically a stranger's home in, uh, in Midland, Texas, because we're on a road trip passing through. And the owner of the, the casino at the time, the poker room at the time, is like, come play at my poker room. You can stay at my house. And, you know, we meet his girls and everything. and. Uh, and like I go to the casino and you hang out and do some work in the bedroom and then socialize with them. I'm I, mostly socialized yeah. with 
with his wife and played with the girls. And I'm playing what's essentially a 10-25 game, and I, I win, I, I want to say somewhere between four and 5,000. Uh, and then we're like off to the next city. I think we mm -hmm. went to Dallas next. I mean, we, we hit so many places, El Paso. We went to a casino in El Paso, Dallas, uh, Midland. Then we went up to Tulsa, and then we went back to Dallas to play mm -hmm. in, uh, another poker That's right, game. We did. Then we were off to Chicago. We played in a meetup game there, and, and these casinos were being so gracious that they were paying for our hotel rooms. They were paying me to come and play in a game, and then I was running amazing, mm -hmm. and, and you were picking up clients. So we went from like, in a short amount of time, I think we, we probably ripped off close to 40,000 in, in like two months between me playing poker, you getting those clients, and then uh, getting some casino uh, kickbacks and then um, paid off a good amount of debt. Also, we weren't paying our rent in San mm. Diego, which was huge. So that was kind of the, uh, the like rebound for us. What a difference two months make. I remember we were sitting here two months ago thinking like, what are we gonna do? Like we have so much, so much that we wanna do. Bill, we're a little bit behind on bills, but We've crushed the last two months financially and I already feel like a lot of pressure is lifted off of me. It's crazy because once lockdown happened, we were kind of prepared already. We had gone through some ups and downs with, uh, with being around each other mm -hmm. all the time. I mean, we, we had some big fights for sure. Um, but I think that you're just gonna have that when you're on top of someone all the time. Like in a hotel room, there's no office. There's, I mean, if you wanna take a phone call, you have to leave like it's just it's just a different lifestyle that we weren't used to um and then we ended up going international we did thailand uh we went to the philippines played poker in the philippines cashed my first mm -hmm. wpt tournament that was that was fun all the while like i remember i took some video of you um you were on client calls in thailand remember that yeah and and i loved it because it was really my first taste of being able to work while being uh, what you would call a, a digital nomad. And I've always been so intrigued by that lifestyle. And I think in general, the, the, the type of human that I am, I crave change and I crave um, almost like uncertainty. So I think that the, that lifestyle has always intrigued me because of that reason. It's just the way that I am the way that I'm made up, the way that I'm created. Some people love routine. They love to go into an office every day. They love to kind of do the same thing every day. And, and I, I think I am like that sometimes, but I think that in general, I crave change a lot. And I think that's why we get along really well and we, we match so well as a couple is because you crave that yeah. a lot as well. And that's why we kind of always are like, what's the next thing? What's the next adventure? And then once we have a lot of trips back to back, we're like, okay, let's not travel. Let's no, stay at home. Up. Let's yeah. go to the gym every day. Let's like have meal prep and let's have our routine. So it's interesting that we kind of crave both, but I think more so than a lot of people that we know, we crave change and uncertainty and, and like a, just like a different thing uh, and, and that inspires us. Yeah. Like for me, I was so inspired to work while in Thailand because I was like, I just started my business. I'm in a beautiful place and I get to work. I felt grateful. I felt grateful that I got to do that versus frustrated. And I think that that's, that, that's a really big thing for me to notice. And it kind of goes back to the conversation of entrepreneurship. I, I love the, how every day could be different. And for me, that feels good and it feels exciting and it feels like I can create anything that I want. Yeah. And it, it took me a while to discover that. And I, I honestly don't know if I experienced that at the beginning of my career as, you know, like a young PR professional starting out. I loved going to the office. I loved um, being day to day, like rolling up my sleeves and being with a team. I loved that. But I think... Uh, at some point that changed a little bit and maybe it is when I met you and Andrew and Christy and started surrounding myself with entrepreneurs 
I where, think that's funny that you call me an entrepreneur. Well, you are an entrepreneur. I mean, you, not, you, you haven't worked for almost like, 15 years. The man or, or the, in the corporate world for 50, well, I've, you've actually never worked for the corporate world in the whole time that we've been together. So yeah, when you tell me, each other for 10 years, when you so. tell me that you used to have a job to me, it's like pff, mind blown. I don't even know what that's, that would be like if you had a job and you had to put on a suit instead of like a swaggy hoodie and, I used to wear a tie. and sweats. Yeah, that's crazy. I used like, to wear a tie. Like I never even knew you. Like I'm like, I would be like, who is this guy? Yeah, it, I mean, it, it does feel like a lifetime ago. But I mean, honestly, we've been together for a lifetime. So mm -hmm. when, well, a and, decade is a long time. Yeah, we've known each other for 10 years. And uh, before, you know, four years before I met you, I left my job in the corporate world and decided to play poker, you know, and that's why it's funny to hear you say entrepreneur, because I've just been a poker player ever since the last like maybe year mm -hmm. and then in the last year because of the content i've been creating through johnny vibes and you know now embrace the grind and and now i'm starting a third channel called um uh, mvp of moments that's going to be all about mv mm -hmm. nfts in the sports world blowing up blowing up right now yeah I, I i i am following my curiosities like mm -hmm. the thought of not having to play poker my to make money is so intriguing for me because basically my whole, most of my professional life, if I didn't play poker, I didn't make money. And the, like the last year I've experimented with some things and figured out that I could make money outside of poker. Obviously getting very lucky with Bitcoin mm -hmm. has something to do with it. Like I'm no genius when it comes to cryptocurrency, but I, I just got lucky. Like here, here's the story. Basically when lockdown happened, mm -hmm. you, because we live in America, you need Bitcoin to play poker in a lot yeah. of situations. And so I, we loaded up on Bitcoin um, for utility. And Bitcoin was like going for like 6,000 at the time. Yeah, it was right. It was rebounding from a crash that it had in Yeah, but I didn't know it was rebounding. I didn't know. Kind of. Even. It was like pretty low. I think a lot of people were a little worried about buying it at the time, right? And yeah. People were more like offloading it. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Uh, I don't know. For a little That's bit? what I'm saying. It's like I'm not a Bitcoin expert. Yeah. It's I just know. I was just using it for, for poker. And then every day I, I would wake up and I'm like, wow, it's like going up. And I remember when it hit 20,000. I was like, that was a big deal. We woke up and we were like, it's at 20,000. Yeah. And I'm like, our life is like significantly changing because of this. And Without us really doing anything, which yeah. is, has never happened to either of us. And I was like, this seems irresponsible because now it's getting to the point of where most of our net worth is in Bitcoin. So I should sell it. And I remember I tried to line up mm. a sale at 20,000. I'm like, it's at an all time high. Mm -hmm. I found someone that's willing to buy it. They live on the East Coast. They want to trade cash We were cash gonna for go it. and We were gonna go to the East Coast the business. And, and like sell a bunch of Bitcoin mm -hmm. and take hundred dollar bills for it. And I'm like- We were we gonna go. Do you realize we were gonna go on, on another road trip? We were gonna do that, but I didn't <laughs> want to go all the way to the Northeast. And the other thing was, is it was the winter time. Yes. And I'm like, I do not want to go to the Northeast during winter time and let's just gamble. And we went to Aruba um, for, mm -hmm. for like a vacation with a bunch of our friends. And then all of a sudden it went from 20K to 60K. So don't call me an entrepreneur, call me a luck box. <laughs> and, and Johnny luck box. Johnny luck box. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I didn't study fundamentals on Bitcoin or anything like that. I just, yeah. I, just uh, I bought at the right time and, and got lucky with it. And now it's, you know, given me, <clears throat> given us some opportunities to pursue some other business ventures, allowed us, allowing us to buy a vacation Airbnb in Tulum. Uh, so I, I think back to where we were when we, when you quit your job and we were, you know, had a mountain of debt and we were like, let's do this. Let's go on this road trip and figure out how to like make it work. Mm -hmm. And I was just like. I mean, I'm getting emotional thinking about it. Mm. It's like, in such a short amount yeah. of time, we've come so far. It's really cool. Yeah, it was, it was hard. Like, I think that I, there was so much uncertainty and there was so much sadness 
about leaving San Diego and I didn't know if we were going to come back and and you told me we would but you just didn't know when and I think it was like that was the hardest part for me because I felt like we were leading a really good life with friends and routines and an amazing apartment in downtown San Diego our coffee shops like we have built this life that was perfect and then we just we're leaving it all behind because we said we can't maintain this anymore. But the the beauty of what we did was we got to, it was like clean slate. And we got to see what we were capable of as human beings, as a couple, as business people, as entrepreneurs. And I, I say entrepreneur because I think an entrepreneur is anyone who does something on their own. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have to be a successful business that's employing thousands of people. You could be doing something just you that's making an impact. Yeah. And I think that that's what you're doing. Like you are what started with a creative project with your YouTube channel is now a brand and it's it's something that makes a difference for people all around the world. Like when you tell me sometimes that someone from Croatia bought a sweatshirt or someone from India is telling you to come out to India to play at a casino like you're making a difference and I don't care what it looks like like entrepreneurship is there's no definition it's one person that's doing something that they love or that they're good at that that is making an impact in the world that's solving a problem that's what I see as an entrepreneur and I think that that's so cool because I think living in the US and just kind of going back to my roots of where I came from, I think, you know, when my mom's vision was for me to come here and be successful, I'm sure not in a million years did she envision me quitting my amazing job at a company that was thriving, that was a great place to be every day to to start my own thing. And she she has many times questioned my decisions. Well, you don't have health insurance. Well, you don't have a 401k. Well, what are you gonna do if you don't make it? And it's, I think that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. It's like you get to just design your life in the way that you want. And it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I think that's also the beauty of it because when people are pressed up against the wall and something isn't working, we're forced to make it work. And I yeah. think that's what happened to us when we left San Diego. We were forced to make it work because we were pressed up against the wall. For sure. I, like our backs were pressed up against the wall, I guess the, is the expression. And I think it's like, I'm grateful for that experience because I know what we're capable of as a couple and as individuals and that we can survive anything. And I think like that almost carried over to the, to last year and the pandemic and us having to go to Joshua Tree because we didn't have a home, we didn't have an apartment, we didn't really have anywhere to stay. Like, of course, we had family and friends that offered, but it's it's also like, we didn't know how long it was gonna last. It could have been a month, it could have been a year. Yeah. And we didn't know how bad it was, we didn't know anything. And so I think that 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 experience of us leaving San Diego and really just like being forced to figure it out made the pandemic and the whole lockdown so much easier because we had almost figured it out before yeah. then. And I think that goes back to what you were saying. Like we had a head start and we really did. Like we lived out of our Tesla for two months. Yeah. And in and out of hotels, we took our bags in, we took our bags out, we took our dog. It was like in and out, in and out, in and out yeah. in every city. And we slept in our car. We almost ran out of charge in our car in the middle of Arkansas. Like we just had the craziest stuff happen to us. And somehow we came home and I felt like we were in a better place than when we left. You know, I felt like rock bottom for me. I think I, I, when we were on the trip, I think, you know. Oh, I think so, but go ahead. Uh, go ahead, say it. I want to see if you're, you're correct. Uh, rock bottom. We were in the East Coast. It was foggy. Oh, oh yeah, I know what your rock bottom was. It wasn't actually my rock bottom, which is funny. We were in Atlantic City. So for, for those of you that play poker, I'm sure that you can understand 
why my rock bottom was Atlantic City. Um, it wasn't my rock bottom. It was just, it was cold. It was in, in winter. Uh, you, it was foggy, you know, and the food was terrible. The games were small. Uh, well, you didn't even go play poker because you were like, it's not even worth it. I looked up the games and it was just like small games. And I, I was just like, why are we here? Why am I basically sleeping in my Tesla in Atlantic City? And I, I mean, it's funny, but I never, you know, I remember when I quit my job um, as a software developer 14 years ago or whatever it was. And I remember thinking I can always go back to corporate America. I can always become a software developer again. And somewhere along the way, you know, maybe a year, maybe two years in, it's been a spectrum, it's been a sliding spectrum. Every year that goes by, it's been, there's no possible way that I could ever go back mm -hmm. to that. Like, I need to figure it out. And when we were in Atlantic City, you know, halfway through our road trip, and I had quote unquote hit rock bottom, you know, the thought in my mind was never, let's go back to the hotel or let's not go back to where we're staying and look at the classifieds and look at careerbuilder.com. Shout out to careerbuilder.com. Well, no one, no one looks at the classifieds. I don't even know if they exist anymore. Actually, I might have dated myself because <laughs> I, classifieds. I think that most of your viewers probably don't even know what a classified is. Do, do, is careerbuilder.com? Am I right? I don't know. Is careerbuilder.com? Yeah, thing? indeed. LinkedIn. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because like that's what I used. Yeah, yeah. I think it's indeed mostly. And but the point LinkedIn. is, is that like I'm, I was, I'm done with that, and there's nothing wrong with that life. It's just that <clears throat> I've determined, and for me personally, I thrive on figuring it out. I thrive you do. You really with do. my back against the wall. Every time I've ever had struggles in poker or we've had financial difficulties, yeah. for some reason, like we've always figured it out and thrived. Mm -hmm. And I, there were times where you would come, you would come to me and you, you were like, our debt is bigger than it was last month. You know, we went from 30K in debt to 40K in debt. To 50, to 50, to 60, yeah. To 70, you know, and like, yeah. I remember you coming to me and saying, what's the plan for this? Like, how are we gonna get out of this? And I remember telling you, I don't know, but yeah. I know that we're going to figure it out. I don't know what I'm doing in terms of how these decisions that I'm making, I don't know how they're gonna eventually pull us out of this, but I just know that it's gonna happen and have faith. Yeah. And, and, it, and it eventually did. Yeah, it's interesting because, well, for me, well, when we look back at our ex kind of our experience of me leaving my job, me starting my business, us leaving San Diego, us going on a road trip, we see that from our individual lenses. Oh, Calvin's back. Come on, come on, buddy. Join us. Lay down. Join us for uh, Lay down. A glass of wine, a Lay little down, puppy wine. Lay down. This is the only time you're ever gonna be able to sit on this couch, so enjoy it. <laughs> so what I was gonna say is, we were staying at our friend's house, Sarah and Andy, at the Jersey Shore, which, I mean, it was my first time in the Jersey Shore. It was and a beautiful it, home. It was a beautiful home on the ocean, and at that point, I actually felt a lot of gratitude that we have people in our life that are willing to support us no matter what. And I think it kind of goes back to why I'm always so focused on relationship because I think that if shit hits the fan, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, you can say whatever okay. you want. It's my if channel. shit hits the fan, we always have people that love us and that will support us. And same, same goes for our friends. Like if someone's like, I need to sleep on your couch, like, hell yeah, we just bought a new couch and it's great for sleeping. Stay with us. And I think that at that point, I felt gratitude. And I think you more were uncomfortable because you were looking at the situation from a different lens. I think my rock bottom was when I had to sleep, when we slept at a charging station. Oh, it wasn't even a charging station. It was a hotel parking lot. And the, the hotel parking lot had a light on the whole entire night. Was it in Arkansas? 
It was somewhere in that area. Okay. It, we were driving to Chicago and that was our longest drive. I remember and I was driving that night and we parked somewhere and I had been sweating uh, all night. And you changed in the parking lot? No, and I didn't change in the parking lot. That was the next morning. Mm. And I was sleeping in my sweaty, clothes. sweaty Lululemons and Calvin was like, just breathing at me the whole night and there was a fluorescent light pointing at me and I, I think that that was my rock bottom because I was like, oh, I can't even sleep. I'm nervous. This light is shining on me and it's funny because, you know, your rock bottom happened when we were at this like amazing home on the ocean but but you were thinking like what am i doing here when i could be somewhere else and I, yeah. m maybe that's maybe that's not the thought also we were like at a restaurant that we were the only people there it was like a little creepy felt like ghost town none yeah. of the none of the street lights were even working i remember we had to like it was yeah. it was something strange where we couldn't even it was like very ghost town ish yeah i mean atlantic city is a weird atlantic place. city was just strange but but i think no matter what we we were never in the same place of um, rock bottom at the same time, and I think that that's kind of a theme of a lot of our conversation lately. Like as long as we're not in the same place at the same time, one of us is able to get the other one out, or if one person is upset, the other one person helps the other one out. So I think that that's a really important thing. Like we never hit rock bottom at the same time. Yeah, definitely. I, I, by the way. <laughs> This conversation has been great. It's been natural. It's been, you know, conversational. It's been, you know, I haven't felt like I've been presenting. Also, I think you've been doing a great job. Like, I think that I have a presenter voice. You do. You have this like. I do. It's like my let me walk you through the PR deck voice. Yeah. And I always call you on it, too. Yeah. You're like, stop it. Stop presenting. I'm like, just be you. Olga. <laughs> like, everyone's going to love you. But I'm used to presenting my decks. Anyways, I, I think that we've gone to some like really great places and it's been an amazing conversation. Well, thank you for sharing yourself with the audience. And, you know, I've been doing this for three plus years, making content on YouTube. And this is really the first real sit down that people have gotten to get to see you. And, you know, I'm sure that there will be more. And yeah. This helped me. This helped me, um, you know, really go down memory lane. But it also helped me uh, figure out how to have, you know, casual conversations. Because it's so easy for me to talk to you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when I'm in interview mode and you're in presenter mode, you know, it's not so easy for us to, to show the world who we are. So thank you for doing this for me. And you know what this also means is that you're, you're going to have to participate in our clubhouse. Oh, I love clubhouse. And you know that I love Clubhouse because I made you get on it. I made you get an account. Everyone can check it out. It'll say Johnny Vibes got invited by Olga. Yep. So there's proof and I love Clubhouse. I think it's incredible and it's it's I think it's also a platform for people to share their genius, share their ideas in a in this format. Like not everyone has a a vlog cast. But and it's also a great way for us to connect with you guys. Yeah, like, it's great. Like we can, like right now we can't take questions, but I wish we could be like, hey, um, Sam, you are you have a question. You're raising your hand. Like let him up and yeah. let him be a moderator. I think like Clubhouse is incredible and I'm I'm there. Yeah, so, uh, I'll be there every after, week. After this uh, episode goes live, you can look for a Clubhouse link in the highlighted comment. Um, which will be a couple days after the episode goes live. So Probably next week, right? Yeah, it'll be soon. So thank you so much. Again, I love you, and I really appreciate you uh, supporting me along this journey, being part of Embrace the Grind, and um, sharing yourself with the audience. So we will be back next week with James Rosenthal. I'm excited for yes, that. Yes, I'm excited for that interview because James is really freaking awesome. He just moved to San Diego, so what a gift. Yeah. You get to go to his house. He is a former poker player turned stock market trader, commodity day trader. Commodity day trader. I think he exits positions before the end of the day. We're going to find out all about that on the next episode. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Embrace the grind. Let's get it. Cheers, baby.
I'ma give it all I got. 